mediumship has been much like any other journey. One where I thought I had an idea where it might go and in actual fact the destination was completely out of my control. However, when I was on the journey, when I'm on the journey, I have the strange sense that I have a bit of control or I have a sense that somehow I can influence where this goes. The journey of mediumship has been quite a long one, quite a tiring one, if you will. One full of emotion, one full of frustration, but nothing else touches that spot that spirituality does. When you're developing your mediumship in the beginning, you want it to happen, you want it quickly. You get frustrated why you can't see things clearly or hear things clearly. But we strive, we push on because everything that we do comes across so shiny, so sparkly and exciting that we get carried away with it and we're enthusiastic and we make lots of mistakes. I can still remember my first demonstration and I'm quite happy to admit I wasn't working properly, probably more psychic than it was mediumship. But that was down to early teaching and tutors um, that was really not the best. And I can have the odd wobble at the fact that things aren't going the way the journey seemed to reflect. And then I realise I've become too attached to where it's going, too attached to the outcome, too attached to what I thought it meant and not what it is. When I first started off exploring mediumship, and indeed that spiritual aspect of myself, the latter part came first. An accident required for me to look at life completely differently. I had to reevaluate life, I had to reevaluate priorities. And at that point, I ended up with quite a bit of time on my hands. And in that time, I began to ask questions that I couldn't answer. The people around about me couldn't answer them. The friends around about me getting serious and heavy. And when my friends said that I wasn't to get serious and heavy, I began to question why my view on life was different to theirs and why I hadn't seen it before. I enjoyed going for walks and for the odd glass of wine and the meals and talking about children and families, talking about work, talking about television and movies and theatre. <clears throat> and suddenly I found myself not interested in any of those things. But luckily I have a, a mindset that is of a civil engineering background. so. I started to question things and I think it's very healthy when we question what's going on, where's this coming from, what exactly am I saying and all of a sudden I started to search for other truths, started to search for spiritual tutors that had an authority and had an understanding and I was very fortunate right in the beginning where I met a gentleman called Glyn Edwards and I remember him demonstrating and my jaw, or should I say my, my bottom jaw was on the floor um, because this gentleman was just talking as if that person was talking next to them and he was repeating things. It was an incredible feat and event that really transformed the way that I thought and worked in that moment. Here was a gentleman talking about somebody's father, walking down the road with him, named the road, took them into the industrial estate where they were, where he worked and named the building and talked about the school close by and where they lived. 
um, incredible evidence that really changed my whole perception of mediumship. The questions that challenged me couldn't be met in the company that I kept or was keeping at that point. So I found myself finding reasons to not meet up with people. I found myself finding reasons, genuine reasons, because I had a young child at that point, very young. I can't come out. I'm exhausted. I'm tied up with the baby. I can't get a babysitter. Or I need to stay at home. I need some real good quality family time. And they were all very legitimate reasons, but they didn't ever feel legitimate to me. They felt like I was avoiding something. And then I began to explore spirituality a little bit more. And I found myself going to the used bookstores. In those days, I barely had enough money to put food on the table and, and everything that a young family requires Anybody that's had a young family or knows a young family knows that every penny you have goes on that beautiful young soul that's joined the family. And so I'd find used books on esoteric themes, on spirituality, on crystals, on dowsing, on life after death, on the spirit world. And that's when I got introduced to Pioneers such, are, such as Arthur Conan Doyle, um, Harry Edwards, Arthur Finlay. And I began to read and it sparked my curiosity to the point where I walked into a spiritualist church. And I could say the rest is history, but it's not. Because if it were, it means that it would be predictable that I could actually leave you to make up your own mind about what happens because it makes sense that this is the next step, then that's the next step. But if you're anything like me, your journey has not been predictable. It was profound. So with that impression, with that new insight, it started to really get me to question where I was going with what I thought was mediumship and I suppose I then started a, a quest for more knowledge to understand how I could gain an insight and, and get my level of mediumship towards what I'd just seen. Um, so I started to look at where I was working and the places that I was going to and the people that I was associating with and I quickly realized, as lovely as these people were, they weren't for me because they didn't have the same mindset. So I started a, a little bit of a quest to find people and I came across a gentleman very early in my development again called Paul Jacobs and he was quite profound and the way he spoke, the way he taught, really fitted like a glove and I took to heart everything he said to me and even to this day I still owe that man a, a, a real gratitude for his support for his instruction and for how he challenged my mindset and that's really important because once we start to find somebody that understands your mind then they can work with you so the way that I started to present and look at my evidence started to change. But it wasn't just the mediumship that was changing, it was myself. It was how I interacted in life, how I looked at life, and how I started to really challenge the intent that I had. Because I was going out there trying to make things happen, trying to prove that I was the medium and looking for all kinds of answers. Well, I needed to let go of that and I come to understand why things weren't working, why things weren't happening. And all of a sudden I 
through a moment of frustration, took my foot off the gas, if you will, and started to relax. And what I realized was that things started to change. I started to see more with the spirit world. I started to hear more with the spirit world. And I started to get an insight and understanding to the evidence I hadn't before. And I quickly realized that it was me getting in the way all that time. It was me having the wrong mindset, pushing the wrong way. And as I started to grow and get that understanding of my evidence, I started to get a new insight of the spirit world. As I've gone through the journey of mediumship, things that seemed to be within my grasp were taken away. Control was lost. There were losses in my life. There were opportunities to grieve. There were experiences where I had extreme loss. There are times where I no longer wanted to be walking physically on this planet. I'm sure you have had experiences like these, maybe in different ways, but times where you've had to really question, what am I here for? And I love my daughter to the moon and back and that's not just because there's a full solar eclipse today but I love my daughter to the moon and back and the moon of any planet in any solar system and back and I wouldn't be without her. My mediumship is a huge important part of who I am. It is something that I've made massive sacrifices for. I've made them, I don't resent them, I don't regret them, but at the time they were huge. I had to walk away from friendships, relationships, made sacrifices in the way that I was able to look after my daughter, in the way that I was able to develop a career, in my relationships with friends and at work. The sacrifices at some point seem to be never ending. I remember sitting down with the spirit world, sitting in the power and having that I'm done moment. Now, you might be similar to me. You have various levels of I'm done. You have I'm done. Then you have I'm done. And then you have I'm done done and when I get to that point yeah no coming back I wasn't there not quite a gentleman who's now in the spirit world gave me my first check-in when I spoke to him his name's Jock MacArthur and I said to him I am fed up trying to convince people that there is life after death I'm going to church services, I'm going to spiritual centres, I'm doing private readings and I feel like I'm on um, some kind of quest or test every single time. I'm kind of fed up with it. And in his usual blunt way, and I'll paraphrase, he said something like, who is it for you to choose how you serve the spirit world? And I wasn't quite sure what he meant. And he followed it by, once you learn to own your own power, you could be great. And he left it at that. Started to see what it was really about. That it wasn't about being seen and being heard as the media. It was about being in contact in the essence of the communicator and learning what was being presented forward from the spirit world at a soul level. And that started to really change who I was and change the way that I interacted with the spirit world. All of a sudden I realized there is an intent, there's morals, there's ethics involved here and a real understanding of what mediumship is.
which isn't just about facts and data and information. It's about emotion. It's about inspiring the living. And all of a sudden, where things were working and I was demonstrating and, and with myself stopping pushing, I started to find that I was being asked to demonstrate more, that I was being invited to different places. And all of a sudden I realised by not trying, the world was opening up to me, that my mediumship was being light. And that was a bit of a peculiar feeling because it's, well, I've not been going that long, I've not been demonstrating that long, but yet people started to really like what I was doing. And Again, it made me question what it was really about because that person many years ago was very, very shy. I was from a small market town in Lancashire and now I was standing in front of people. Well, I couldn't even stand in front of my own peers in a classroom. I couldn't even string two words together. I was so nervous. But yet, here's this young man standing with authority with an understanding in front of crowds and large crowds, congregations in churches and different centres and being asked to speak. Well, as much as that satisfied me, I still had a quest for more. I still had a thirst for more knowledge. And it was through a friend again um, that was researching the paranormal, was writing a book and I started to get involved and looking at that side of things and I quickly realised that there is no such thing as paranormal because it's normal to those people that believe. But what I also understand, there was an intelligence working behind these events where they were presenting themselves in such a way that people were feeling them, they had a presence, there was physical reactions, there was emotion involved and it got me to look at what was happening where the spirit world were trying and trying their hardest to communicate and people were sensationalizing this and all of a sudden that didn't feel right either all of a sudden it was well these people are just trying to communicate these people are just trying to get their words through and I remember stood in front of a TV camera where I was asked to work on a very well-known program. And I remember saying, well, there's no spirit world here except this person's father. But the cameras didn't want that. They wanted the excitement of the moment and the haunting. And so it really drove home my intent that that wasn't the way to do things. And to be entertaining. It's all about reverence. It was all about doing things morally right. So again, that had an influence upon my mindset to my job as the medium is to bring those loved ones alive, to tell their story of life. I never got a chance to ask him because I knew he would say, I'm not telling you, you will need to find out for yourself. And I have. I had to get to the point where I was at one with the spirit world. I wasn't biting them. I wasn't wanting anything from them. I'd given up trying to get there. I'd given up trying to force some, my mediumship to be something that it was never going to be. I always thought I'd be publicly demonstrating I always thought I'd be teaching and here I was with a very young child on my own, single parent, doing a 70 hour week, rushing home, feeding my daughter, putting her to bed, parents coming around looking after her, running away to do a church an hour's drive, doing the church service, coming back, then eating and then going to bed and going back to work. And I thought, I'm on a hamster wheel here, doing the same thing over and over and over. And every couple of years I'd come back to, what am I doing? What am I doing this for? 
And then I had another wobble and I was nearly at done done. And a young man called Phil Dykes said to me, that would be a real shame. That'd be a real, real shame if you were to do that. And it really opened my eyes to different people coming to the demonstrations where we have the believers, we have the faith, and but we also have people that are questioning and people that are skeptical. And that intrigued me why they were coming. And it was through that mindset I had and the content and the evidence given, people were having answers to their questions. People were seeing the evidence being provided that was making them from a questioner to there might be something in this. Almost like planting seeds, if you will, and those seeds would grow. And I found in some demonstrations, some of the contacts would be quite profound. And some of them would be, as we would say, a normal everyday contact for a medium. And I started to see a pattern, started to see an intelligence working with me that my mediumship wasn't just about there to present to a church or to preach to the converted. At times, it brings people into that belief, into that faith, into that understanding that there's more to life. And that started to really hit me profoundly, not with the level of mediumship, but actually what the level of the responsibility a medium has, that we, when we demonstrate, it's not about how good we are or how well we look or how well we present, it's about that evidence that touches somebody's life, that in that moment touches their soul, that allows them to leave with an understanding that there's more to life than we see, that we do survive the physical death of the body, but how our loved ones are still rooting for us, are still pushing us forward, trying to inspire us. In fact, I think you might have said something like, if you give it up, I'm giving it up. I thought he was kidding. I never give him the opportunity to find out. <laughs> I never give myself the opportunity to find out if he was serious or not, because I, I pulled my socks up, got back on the bike with the spirit world. And probably within 12 months, life changed completely. I don't know what it's like to know where my journey is going. But I'm not sure I want to know where my journey is going because I'm now grateful for every single day the spirit world give me. Life is Life is so short, we really have to appreciate, not get fixated on what we think it should be, because we'll get there anyway. If somebody had said to me 25 years ago that I'd be doing what I'm doing now, speaking to you on a video diary, I would have laughed at me. But here I am doing a video diary and for some reason, you're still listening. It's touched a part of you. It's resonating with you, I hope. Please don't get fixated on the end line. The responsibility of a medium, that it's not about being seen and it's not about being popular and it's not about being entertaining. It was about reverence. It was about delivering the story of life to people in the way that the communicator wants, how they want it, knowing that whether I deem the evidence good or not, I will never know. But to that person, it's profound. 
changes their life. That really landed with me and still to this day sits with me. I'm not bothered if I'm hidden behind the screen. I'm not bothered if I work on radio where I can't be seen. It's all about the words. It's all about the delivery. It's all about the intent. And how it sits with somebody. And to know in a demonstration that the evidence can inspire a soul in front of me. And even where somebody doesn't receive a contact but is there watching and taking it all in, it can have a profound effect as well. Please don't try and be better than somebody else. There are two beautiful souls I trained with along my path. One, I don't know where that person is in this world anymore. And another, they are serving the spirit world by keeping the doors of a spiritualist church open. And I'm doing my part. My part isn't any better than their part but my journey is different. I guarantee you, your journey is different. Please don't get caught up in trying to force something. It will be its beautiful self. Appreciate those around about you. Tell them you love them. And let the spirit world lay the steps in front of you. All you need to do is trust and walk. We're not here to prove things. People will make their own mind up with the evidence they receive or they see. But in a mediumship demonstration, it should all be about the spirit world. It should all be about the communicator. And once we have that understanding, then mediumship has a different journey. We never know where we're going to be going. We never know what comes next. We never know what opportunity or the way that the spirit world will, play, will place us. If we look at the pioneers of the past, those that have paved the way for all of us to have a platform to work and a religion to work in, they went through great sacrifices, they went through hardships, they went through real moments in their life where they were persecuted, they were harassed, they were uh, protested about. But today is no different because we still have those kinds of people, those kinds of situations. But it's about the work and the intent that we do that paves the way. I heard a wonderful lady called Mavis Patilla once speak and say, we stand, if I remember this, a paraphrase, we stand in the footsteps of giants, but oh, we do. And once we start to understand the reverence of mediumship and spirituality and how we can profoundly change somebody's life by presenting the words of their loved one, that comes with real hefty responsibility not just to be as good as we possibly can in that moment because every medium wants to be that but actually to be true to be honest to get out of the way of self and deliver from the greatest evidence to the most mundane evidence but really understand it then that's when we start to really serve the spirit world and that's where the journey starts to begin because once I've started to have that understanding and to stop trying and to stop pushing and just be and share my truths and be the person I'm meant to be what a medium's job is to inspire not to be seen, not to be popular, but to just deliver what the spirit world, what the communicator wants, being in service. Whether it's at a local church, whether it's somewhere in the world, when you 
It doesn't matter that the intent stays the same. Being true, being honest, and being passionate, and having a mindset that is always open. What am I going to learn? What am I going to feel? What is it that the spirit world is trying to convey to that person in front of me and that departed loved one? And what am I learning in that moment? And that's where my journey is to this day. Learning, understanding, trying to master, seeing the world through their eyes, listening to people, listening to the spirit world. And all of a sudden my drive to gain or succeed has diminished, it's gone. It's about service and it's about being true to the spirit world. And that's where things start to happen. It is my belief that the spirit world at this point, if anyone's development, pick them up and move them to where they're needed. Whether it is that church, whether it is to another country, whether it is halfway across the world or right around the world, it makes no difference. We're in service to where they need us. And it comes with sacrifice. We don't always have the family life we would choose to have. As my children say to me, well, we don't have a normally normal life because, Dad, we're not always around. That's the sacrifice that we make. That we choose to do. I'm quite lucky now my children are both growing up and understand and they know that I'm very passionate about the work that I do and I love them dearly for that. But to spend time with them is incredibly important. To have family time is incredibly, it's incredibly important because it really gives me that passion and purpose to carry on. I know I have their support and I know that they proud. So the journey of mediumship has been one that has been very exciting and still is very exciting, but for different reasons now. It's all about learning, it's all about sacrifice, and it's all about doing the work of the spirit. And that's my journey today.